Hello, hello. In this episode, we are going to be diving into three concepts that I base my life upon. Have courage, feel the fear, and do it anyways. Welcome to the Blessed by Angels podcast. My name is Jen Gilbreth. Ever since I was a little girl, I have felt deeply connected to the angelic realm. Over the years, I have dedicated my time and energy towards delivering messages from beyond. Yes, that's right. I talk to dead people, although I don't necessarily consider them dead. In many ways, they are much more alive than us in this physical realm. On this podcast, I will be channeling messages from spirit. Whether you tune in each week for the new messages or feel like picking a message at random. This podcast is designed for spirit to lead you to the messages for you here and now. These messages have changed the way I view and play in life. I hope that these messages can do the same for you. I wanted to start with a personal story. I am human just as you. I am also embracing the medicine within every day. This podcast is all about being lovingly curious. <laughs> well, I took three weeks off social media and it was divine. It was exactly what I needed to reconnect, to remember who I was, to get myself back into the space of living versus being numb. I have found that it's so easy when I'm in the car or in the grocery line or at the dog park, even just laying in bed in the daytime to just scroll on my phone, to watch everyone else's information and to watch everyone else's life. Yes, it can bring a lot of enjoyment, but at some point it does become numbing. It, it makes me feel numb. What's the point of that? I'm not being connected. I'm not being fulfilled. It's just become a pattern or an addiction. Removing my social media was so powerful and it felt so much more freeing. And then I found that after a tough day or how I wanted to regroup was to start watching TV. And I found myself doing the same thing, watching TV shows. It's just funny how it's so easy for us to want to fall back into the space of being numb and into the space of not fully embracing life. Now, that doesn't mean having to go out and have big experiences every day, especially when we have the day-to-day lifestyle of getting things done or of making life happen. It can be kind of exhausting at times. It can feel a little bit overwhelming. And at night, sometimes we just want to be at home and watch a show, and that's totally fine. But it's noticing why that's going on. Is it to numb out? Or is it for the enjoyment of watching that movie or watching that show? And there's a fine line between the two, and I'm learning that within myself. I recently downloaded TikTok and Instagram again to start posting with the podcast. I was instantly overwhelmed. It wanted me to shut down. That Friday that I downloaded it, I came home after working at the herb shop. And then I got, I laid in bed and I watched Modern Family all night long. I'm not proud of it, but that was my reality. Saturday, I decided, you know what? This isn't going to happen. I need to figure out why that shut me down. I just noticed the unhealthy relationship that I had with social media. I was comparing myself and thinking, who am I? Who am I to make a difference on a podcast? I don't have wisdom. Everyone's out here creating amazing content. It felt overwhelming and it felt exhausting. Like, I don't want to spend my life focused on making content and not living my life. Then it brought in all this fear of not being enough, of not being able to do enough, of not being able to accomplish enough. If it was even worth it, like, is it even worth my time and my energy? I'm going to be honest. I sat with that and it was very scary and it was very overwhelming. I was reminded that we're here to co-create with spirit, to embrace our medicine within. It was a big aha moment for me. That yes, not everyone's going to understand and it might feel like it's hard to not be drowned out by everyone else's. There's so much out there. And then I was also reminded that whoever is supposed to be here will be here. That it's not supposed to be heavy or fearful or scary, but it's just supposed to be real and raw and help inspire people in their everyday life. For me, that really brought me back into the foundation of when I started sessions 
as a medium, being able to connect people's ancestors and their loved ones who have passed. When I started working with Candice, learning about the healing path of shamanism, as I learned about energy work and Reiki and foot zoning and herbs, all these things, it took courage to step into it. It took courage to start. It took courage to open my mindset that I could be a part of that. And this podcast, Moving Into Creating a Beautiful Tribe, is all about taking courage once again. That is what we came here to experience, is to have the courage to do something. It's so easy for us to get caught in what's comfortable, to become numb, or to become complacent. Really, it's all about having courage, courage to dream big, courage to connect within, courage to know that when you connect within, you can find the answers and that you have the answers within. It's having courage to trust yourself. Now, courage is a scary word because it almost brings in this sense of like this lion, like this beating, this energy of like, like, like this, I don't know, like just this push of energy. And it can feel overwhelming in a world where we're taught as young children to shut down, to play it safe, to listen to the guidelines, to stand in a line, to listen to every little thing you're told. And we're also taught to shut down our medicine within. It's, you know, time and time again, at about the age six to nine, A lot of children will have a lot of spiritual gifts. They're very free and very fun and very connected. And then as they get to a certain point, it's like, okay, you can't live life like that anymore. Like having imaginary friends, spirit guides, you can't have those imaginary friends. You can't talk about those imaginary friends. You know, you can't talk about angels. That's not normal. You're not going to fit in. And we are so taught that we have to conform to live in the space of society. That's okay, but we're taught that's how it needs to be. We're taught this, how we need to look at it, what we need to do. When we step outside of it, it brings in this space of fear. It brings in this space of worry. It's like, can I do this? Can I have the courage to connect within? And in reality, we are here to face that fear. We are here to embrace life And in order for us to fully feel alive and to not feel numb is to push ourselves outside, have the courage to push ourselves outside, to feel the fear. I like to think of fear or think of worry or anxiety as showing you that you're embracing something bigger than yourself. Curtis and I set goals for the next year, for the next six months, for the next 60 days, and then 30 days. And he kept saying, it's important to think about, does this goal make me feel scared? Because if it makes me feel scared, it's pushing me outside of my flow. It's pushing me outside of the box that I'm comfortable in. And that's where growth happens. That's where we connect into our ancestors. We connect into God. We connect into the universe. And we can co-create in such a bigger way when we step out into the fear, when we step into it. And not only that, we get to fill and we get to embrace those beautiful parts of us that we are afraid to look at. I always say, in our in my sessions your greatest strengths are your also your greatest weaknesses that also means that you can be easily shut down or have wounds that hold you back from your greatest strengths and that's the same thing with fear when we have fear it cocoons us it holds us back so if you want to public speak if you want to learn how to play music If you want to write a book, if you feel like you want to go back to school or you want to start a podcast or you want to start doing videos, you want to create content, what is holding you back? You are the only person at the end of your life who is going to look back at your life and decide, did I live my life the way that I wanted? 
It's not going to matter about the friends who don't support you or the family who doesn't understand or the relationship maybe you're in who doesn't fully understand why you want to jump into the space that you do. Hey there, I wanted to take a brief moment to thank you so much for listening and being a part of Blessed by Angels podcast. I have found that our angelic team wants to help remind us who and why we are earthside at this present moment. The more that we remember the angelic support that we are given, the easier it is for us to live life to the fullest. So if this message or any of the previous messages from the podcast have really stuck out to you, I would encourage you to send them to anyone who you feel could benefit from the messages. Or if you feel prompted, I would love for you to leave a review on any of the platforms that you are listening on. I would love to hear your feedback. Blessings. They will not have a voice. When you look back at your life sketch, it all comes to you saying, did I do what I wanted? And regardless of what age you're at now, you can start now. You can decide, hey, this pushes me. This makes me a little bit fearful in a positive way. I want to accomplish that. I want to put forth my energy and my time into that space. I want to do it anyways, regardless of where you're at in life, regardless of the circumstances, what can you do that's going to help you feel alive inside? Have faith, have courage, feel the fear, and do it anyways. Because we came here to co-create with spirit. Now, that doesn't mean we just sit down and we just create in our mind. Yes, that is powerful, but it's also putting action into the world. If you want to write a book, the book is not going to write itself. You can sit in meditation for so long, but until you put forth the action, you are not connecting into the flow of the universe. Action is just as important as inspiration. And when you can combine those two together, that's where true power and true courage and true understanding come in. And this is all for myself to learn as well, is that as we have courage, feel the fear and do it anyways, it gives a greater sense of purpose in life. And maybe that's teaching lessons. Maybe maybe someone really loves piano and they're like, I just want to have maybe three students that I can teach to get me back into that flow. Like, why not? Why not do those things? It's never too late. You're never too old. You're never too young to embrace this human experience because we are here to learn, to co-create, to embrace our medicine within. And as we do that, it gives us a greater sense of purpose, a greater sense of hope, and a greater sense of love. And I have been one who, even when I was little, was struck with major anxiety. I would, even during school, I would get massive headaches. And so I'd go to the doctor, the nurse's office, and she'd be like, oh, hi, Jenny. Here's a wet washcloth. Come lay down. And then I would lay down for 20 minutes. And if it was really bad, I'd have some kind of, you know, a Tylenol to take or something. And then I'd go back to class. But I was regrouping as I look back now, I was regrouping and recentering because I would get so anxious being around so many people. And hello, I'm still like that today. I know that I have to give myself time to meditate, to lay down, to to regroup. And when I'm around too many people at a time, I have to go back to that space because that is going to help me feel aligned so that I can be connected. And if I'm not taking care of myself, if I'm everywhere, then I don't have the space of courage. I definitely am full of fear and I feel stuck and stagnant, like I can't move forward. And so we do have to slow down. We do have to come back in to connect within our medicine to see, hey, this lights me up. This makes me feel excited. I want to give this a try. And then doing it anyways. And this is the thing is we think that we have to have the golden answer. Like we have to have this is what I'm here to accomplish. And this is the goal. And then because we have that big goal, it actually holds us back from doing anything. I like to think of it as a ladder. If you just follow one passion, one thing that's going to make you feel alive inside, you feel that one thing and you experience it. 
And maybe in the process of experiencing that or mastering that, a new inspiration sparks and it leads you up. And then that inspiration sparks and leads you here. And it's a ladder and it keeps bringing you up. It it keeps bringing you more connected to life. And all of a sudden you're at the top of this ladder like, wow, how did I get here? It was all because I decided to take that class or because I decided to talk to that one person. And my life has transpired since then. But it's those little things that we can do. And it's those little things that make us feel more connected and more alive inside. It's just having the courage to listen to what it is that you're drawn to and to just starting it. And who cares if it's not perfect? Who cares if it doesn't look the best? If it's not going to be the perfect content like other people, whoever is supposed to be here will be here. When we live our own medicine, we draw the people to us. Instead of faking it, instead of having to show up in specific ways. You know, it was so easy when I was social media three, free for three weeks. I would go hiking or running and I felt like, oh, I need to be recording this or I need to do this. I need to create this content. Why would I do that? I'm not giving myself permission to fully be here because I'm too busy faking it, not fully embracing it because I'm worried about creating the perfect content. That's not embracing the medicine fully. Embracing the medicine fully is it is experienced within you and it's a lifestyle. And when we live that lifestyle, other people will see it. Other people will be inspired by it, but that isn't the purpose. The purpose is to live that lifestyle within those who see the difference. Those who are drawn to that will then want to come into that space, but it does not have to be a harsh or a worry or a negative thing. It's those little things that we can do to bring us back into joy. My jasmine tea that I drink brings me back into joy. It brings me back into the space of, okay, I don't have to be in the masculine energy. When I connect back into spirit, I align, I slow down. Things show up for me when I'm showing up to do some things. And opportunities arise. It's so funny, even with this podcast, when I was getting it started last year, I was having the hardest time connecting it to Apple Podcasts. The hosting site that we go through is supposed to like connect it to other places because it's easier for me to do that. (laughs) I had, it took me one day, like four hours to try to get it connected. I was in this heavy, this stressful, this worry. I was trying to do the, I was not in the flow of trusting. It made me so frustrated. And then I went back one more time when I was still so frustrated about it. And then finally, two weeks later, I'm like, okay, I really want this to be on Apple podcast because that's where I listen to all my things. I know I want it to be there. I connected into spirit. I said a prayer. I surrendered. Then I said, please help me to know how I can do this. Instantly, I logged on. I took deep breaths. I didn't get overworked. And then it took me literally 15 minutes. After it took me hours of my stress, of my pounding, of pushing that I was trying to make happen. There are things that maybe we want to get done. We have all these drive and this determination, this inspiration. And then if we're pushing it so hard, It feels like doors are closing. You don't have to give up on it, but maybe it's time to step back for a minute so that you can regroup, reconnect to the medicine within. You can find that joy, that purpose, that drive, connect to spirit, co-create with creation, allow things to fall into place how they may. That is so beautiful and it's so hard to remember at times. I know I'm probably rambling at this point, but really have courage feel the fear and do it anyways because when you cross over you will look at your life sketch and you will see the things that you love the things that you accomplished the things that maybe you wish you could have embraced more and you'll be able to work with that on the other side but why not embrace it now and experience joy and to love it and to have fun in this present moment If there is something or a thought process that is worrying you to death, it's good to be aware of it. And what actions are you taking that contribute to that worry every day? Are there things that you're doing that bring that worry into your space even more? And if there are, maybe take a step back and say, okay, I want to do something that's going to bring joy. Maybe I want to go play music or 
Maybe they want to go for a walk. How can I bring joy in that moment that's going to help bring you back into the space of connection? Thank you for tuning in to the Blessed by Angels podcast. It is such an honor to deliver these messages from beyond. If you want to connect deeper to your angelic realm and the support team that you have, I have a plethora of resources on my website at blessedbyangels.org. And of course, I'll leave the link in the show notes. You are connected to the divine. Having divine connection is innate ability that each and every one of us have. Before we came here, we were spirit. And after we leave this realm, we are introduced back into the spirit world. So having spirit to spirit conversations and knowings and understandings are innately and infinitely who you truly are. When we step into this body, we tend to forget. We are not separated from the divine. There is just a lack of remembrance. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. And I look forward to delivering more messages from beyond.